often hear teachers, biblical scholars, theologians cry out, context, context, context. And while I believe this is true, we, we, we must look at the context, there is another component that's often ignored, and that is culture, culture, culture. I recently watched a, an episode of History Happened Here series uh, with a episode called The Dead Sea Scrolls and was narrated by Leonard Nimoy. Uh, here's a small clip from this episode that I'd like you to watch. Pay careful attention to the very end and see if you find the problem. He tosses stones into the darkness, hoping to flush out the animal. But instead... He finds a clay pot, and inside, rolled up in linen, bundles of documents. Scrolls, seven of them, fragile and decayed by time. They bear mysterious writings. There it is. Do you see it? Can you see the problem? What's wrong with this picture? Now, if you can read first century Hebrew script, as we see in the Dead Sea Scrolls, then you probably pretty quickly figured out what the problem was. But if not, well, before I explain what the problem is, I want to show you how the mistake occurred. Here's a sheet of notebook paper. If you were given a sheet and asked to write something, Without even thinking, you would just instinctively start writing. You know where to start writing. For example, just to the right of the red line. And just on top of the blue line. You don't even have to think about it. It's just automatic. While this may seem pretty obvious, would it be that obvious to someone who has never seen or used a sheet of notebook paper? Well, let's see if our culture has influenced how we interpret images. Here's an image from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Can you see the lines on the image? Here, let me, let me add some emphasis to those lines so that you can see them a little bit better. Now, even the scribes of the Dead Sea Scrolls use lines, just like we do on notebook paper, to keep their text straight and even. But here's the problem. While we write our letters on top of the line, the ancient Hebrew scribes wrote their text under the lines. You see, this image is upside down. Here is how it should look. Now, let's take a look at the image from History Happened Here, the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's right. The producers of the film assumed, from their cultural experience, that the letters were on top of the lines of the scroll, and this assumption caused them to include an upside-down image of the scroll. Oops. <laughs> Here's how the image should appear. So the question is, can our cultural perspective incorrectly influence how we read the biblical text. Well, let's take a look at an example. Here's Genesis 24, verse 67. And Yitzhak, or Isaac, brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Re Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted for his mother. Now the question here is, what is Sarah's tent? Did Sarah own her own tent? Did Abraham have a tent and Sarah have a tent? Many Bible commentators have stated that the wife of a wealthy husband did have her own tent to live in. And this assumption, by the way, is based strictly on this very verse. The Bedouins of the Near East exist today as they have for thousands of years. They live in tents and family encampments, just as Abraham did 3,000 years ago. 
and their culture has changed very little since the days of Abraham. So we can study the Bedouin culture to get a little bit of an understanding of Abraham's culture. Now while the Bedouin father, just like Abraham, is the master of the house, he does not own the physical house. But guess who does? That's right. The wife owns the tent. Sarah didn't have her own tent. Instead, she owned the tent that Avraham lived in. Interesting. Let's take a look at another verse. This is Genesis 9, verse 21. And he drank, he, by the way, happens to be Noah, or Noah, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. Let's take a look at how you would write his tent in Hebrew. This is the Hebrew word ohelo. It, it's composed of the word ohel, which means tent, and then the suffix o. And o means of him, or as we would say in English, his tent. But, this is not the word we find in Genesis 9.21. In Genesis 9.21, the Hebrew word is ohela. Now here's the word ohela, that's the, again the word ohel, meaning tent, but this time it's the suffix ah, and that means of her, or her tent. So you see, 921 is a mistranslation that should be translated as, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within her tent. Incidentally, uh, this is not unique to this verse alone, but you can also find the word ohela being translated as his tent in Genesis 12 verse 8. Genesis 13 verse 3 and Genesis 35 verse 21. So why do the translators always put his tent in the translation? Because they did not understand the cultural background and assumed this was a textual error within the Hebrew text. In fact, if you look at the, the Nikodot, the vowel pointings that are placed in the Masoretic text, you'll see that they put the O dot, the Cholam, up on top to try and give it the Ohelo and, and give it that sound to it. But remember, the Nikodot were not in the original text. It's Aleph, He, Lamed, He, which means her tent. Again, it's imperative that when we look at the text, we must look at it from the perspective of the ancient Hebrews and not from our own personal cultural perspective.